This time, we will learn about mathematical language and symbols. This is the second part of Mathematics in the Modern World. Mathematics as a body of knowledge has a structure and all elements and operations in it operate as a system. It contains a set of axioms about objects, rules of logic, and theorems which are consequences of logic applied to axioms. This system is built from top to bottom. It starts with a few conjectures and the latter gives rise to a vast collection of mathematical knowledge. This character of mathematics is not apparent to students who are often overwhelmed by topics discussed in math subjects. This revelation often becomes manifested to math teachers as soon as they got introduced to abstract algebra and non-Euclidean geometries. As a body of interconnected units of axioms and theorems, mathematics carries out its discourse through a distinct set of language and symbols only found in the discipline. Let's take a look of some of the terms that was mentioned on the previous slide that are not so familiar with all of us. So let's begin with axioms. Axioms is or are or axiom is a statement or proposition which is regarded as being established, accepted, or self-evidently true. Take note, a statement or proposition which is regarded as being established. By the way, when we are talking about a statement, a statement is a sentence that can be true or false. Okay? So, a statement which is regarded as being established, accepted, or self-evidently true is called axioms. Second is logic. You hear logic. Wala ba kay logic? Oy, uh, diba? So, logic is a reasoning conducted or assessed according to strict principles of validity. That is logic. We can be syntactically wrong and logically right or we can be logically right but syntactically wrong. What does it mean? Example, in English, you can have the correct grammar, but the thought is wrong. So, correct construction of sentence, correct um, formation of words, but the, con uh, the real content of the sentence is wrong. That is logically wrong. When we say logically correct, but syntactically wrong. You know what that sentence means, but it is written not correctly or wrongly. So that is syntax. So which is better? You will be logically wrong and syntactically right, or you will be syntactically wrong and logically right. Okay? So for computer science, both of those are essentials. Okay? So, even as if we are dealing with sentences, statements, and relating to others about experiences, both of this logic and syntax should be correct so that you will not be misinterpreted. Okay, so that is logic. Next is theorem, a general proposition not self evident, unlike axiom, but proved by a chain of reasoning a truth established by means of accepted truth. So, if after plenty of proving, you come up with a final conclusion, that can be a theorem. So, not self-evident. You need to prove it first. And when it is proved, it is now become a theorem. Next, Conjectures, it's an opinion or conclusion formed on the basis of incomplete information. In our vernacular word, this is pagduda. 
okay? And conjectures can be true or false because it is just your conclusion based on the observed pattern. If your friend is frequently doing something and you observed it many times and you can conclude na, ah, ing ane juda akong friend, that is a conjecture. But that, that doesn't mean that your conjecture is true or false. So, that means conjectures is useful in mathematics, but it is not necessarily true all the time. Let's proceed with characteristic of mathematical language. There are three characteristics. We have it is non-temporal, it has no emotional content, it is precise and concise. Let's proceed with it is non-temporal. When we say non-temporal, it means that it has no past, present, and future. There is no conjugation of words in mathematics in the manner that English has a conjugation of verbs. Mathematical statements are presented simply as is. So in, in math, our verb is is, is equal to. Okay, that makes the sentence or statement, mathematical statement, correct. Okay, let's proceed to the second. It has no emotional content. It has no emotional content. That means it has no equivalent words for joy, happiness, despair, or sadness. They that state experience students and mathematicians feel about math is only a subjective experience okay the static experience students and mathematicians feel about math is only a subjective experience when we say subjective that means it's their personal feeling Taking it also does not speak about values in the manner that people speak about human values in society. If ever there is one implied value which is highly prized in mathematics that could only be adherence to logic and reason, possibly also to form and nothing more. Because again, mathematical language has no emotional content. The third is, it is precise and concise. It is exact and accurate in its statements and consequently, it has no need for unnecessary words. This is not always helpful to students because being novice in math, they need a little more elaboration, more exploration, and more explanation, which can be achieved with more speech that is why i'm doing i'm trying to do my best to make really a powerpoint presentation or a video presentation in my mathematics subjects because we need more elaboration more exploration more explanation and that can only be achieved with more speech that speech, however, will come from teachers and writers who will assist students in their studies and not from mathematics itself. Okay. We have common mathematical symbols. So this is the beginning of the mathematical language. We will be dealing with common mathematical symbols, mathematical equations, ex mathematical expressions, mathematical sentence, sets, functions, interval notation, binary operation, and so on. So let's begin with common mathematical symbols. So we have this first here. Let me use the pointer. Plus, minus, plus or minus, okay? You are familiar with that. So this is used for addition or subtraction. It can also indicate the sign of numbers, positive or negative. Today, sometimes context is needed to interpret signs. So when you are in business, this is also meaning profit and deficit. Okay, positive in temperature is hot 
and cold. What else? For COVID-19, this is positive and negative. And this one is plus and minus. So when we use these symbols, we need to understand the context. Why? Because not, not all uh, situations, we can really say na, this means plus and minus because contextually we need to refer to the context on when to use it, how to use it in that context. Multiplication or division. Multiplication can also be represented by a dot or an asterisk and division by a backslash or a horizontal bar or the one we use in our elementary days. With no notation is written between characters, the assumed operation is multiplication. Example, x, y. They are just placed side by side and no symbols in the middle, then that can be, or we assume the operation as multiplication, like 10x. That means multiplying the value of x 10 times. Okay? Next, we have the equal sign. This is the equality sign. The symbol has variants such as not equal. Can you Tell me what is the symbol of not equal. Okay, that is this one with a slash. Approximately is two curve one and two. Approximately equal to. And then three lines of this is congruent or equivalent. We have also less than or equal. 2 and greater than or equal to. So these are the different variants of the equality sign. How many? Not equal to 1, approximately equal to 2, congruent or equivalent 3, less than or equal to 4, greater than or equal to is 5. So those are the five variants of the equality sign. The next is less than, this is less than, or greater than symbol. So the expression x greater than 5 but less than 11 pertains to the set of numbers strictly greater than 5 but strictly less than 10. So you can see that or you can... 5, okay, that is less than, less than, and 11. So when you read this, x is between 5 and 11. It can be, they are not included, or x is greater than, because nagganga siya padulong sa x, greater than 5 but less than 11. You can read that as that. And then, we will proceed to the next part. These variables x, y, z, etc. The English alphabet in lower case is used to represent variables. So when we say variables, these are numbers, words, or oh, not numbers, but usually letters and words that can represent something. Okay, they are variables. Although capital letter will also do, for example, in physics. P, V, and T, capital letters, represent pressure, volume, and temperature, respectively. But most of the times, we use small letters to represent a value which is unknown in mathematics. Next, we have subscripted variables. This indicates uh, order. Or sequence like let's say this T is a variable to represent temperature so the first temperature the second temperature so subscripts you don't have 
to be worried about the value that the subscripts are representing because it only indicates the sequence, the order, which one is the first to occur, the second to occur, the third to occur. They are subscripted variables. Okay. Let's proceed with this Greek alphabet. The Greek alphabet is extensively used in mathematics. For example, this is alpha, beta, gamma, and theta are used to represent angles. Pi, did you remember pi? For the irrational number 3.14, 16. You have also sigma, the capital letter of sigma, which means summation, and mu for population mean, and sigma... The smaller sigma is for variance. So those are examples of the use of the Greek alphabet. So, yeah, when, when you can see Greek alphabets, don't be afraid of them. In any of your mathematics subjects or other subjects where Greek, especially books, where Greek alphabets are used, don't be afraid of them. Why? Because they are just variables representing an unknown value or a constant value. Next, we have this square root of x and n cube of x n cube, n root of x, sorry. So, that means the non-negative number whose square is equal to x, and this one is read as the nth root of x. So, example, if b is equal to the square root of n and x, then b raised to n is equal to x. Okay, so those are, uh, th that is the meaning of this square root and n root of x. The last but not the least is this symbol. Oh, this is, or these two symbols are found in calculus. dy dx is closely associated with the concept of rate of change and this integral sign represent integration and occasionally also to summation. It is beyond the scope of this book or this lesson to introduce you to all mathematical symbols. You will see more of them as we move forward with this course. So these are just the common, okay? The four fundamental operations, this, the equality sign less than or equal uh, less than or greater than the variables subscripted variables the greek alphabets radical sign to represent square root and nth root of any variable and this one for the calculus